course, you're an expert now. Just finished taking your course back as France from England, and you think you're all that. Come with me, and I'll take you through the hardest starts that EU4 has to offer. We'll see if you're up to it after this. Now, what do you think the hardest start is in EU4? Okay, so we start off with I knew. Uh, this is number 13, a very weird list I know, uh, but it felt right to include certain nations and certain groups. Anyway, I knew is up first. Uh, the reason they're tricky is because if you try to attack into Japan, uh, well, that happens. And that is 90,000 troops at the start of the game. I'm pretty sure no one has that. I think that's the worst possible state. Ming has 100,000 possibly max, but they start with 75,000. So that's the biggest war you can declare at the start of the game. Uh, and then otherwise, you're just marching into really unsavory territory up here. Or you're going to attack across a strait into woods. Uh, so it's, it's not exactly fun. And then Nikva will usually get some allies as well. If I just unpause for a little bit. Oh, good. that's a great first event, just to prove my point. There you go, they've now allied Solon, and that's 12,000 to your 5,000. Another fun part, you have stability cost modifier, which is fine, but then institution spread minus 20%. Uh, you don't start with feudalism. It's kind of a rough one. Uh, but to get this going, generally what you'll do is murk up and attack into these areas. You have a very powerful, I'm just kidding, land lead maneuver plus one. Just the national ideas kind of suck. The attrition is okay. I don't mind that, but for defense, it's okay. Good spruce is okay. Like, they're not terrible, but they're really not great. On the bright side, the land you have can be developed, um, so it's not the end of the world. And once you do get going up here, you can potentially start heading into Korea, uh, but then you run into the issue of attacking a nation that is under the protection of Ming, uh, at the same time as Ming might not want to make you a... <laughs> Uh, tributary. So that's a bit of an issue. Generally speaking, you are decently placed to go to the new world though. So that's always fun. Um, you could go and form like, it's not even Japanese at this point, but I knew uh, California, live out your dreams like that. But if you were to attack up here, for example, yeah, glacial dice roll for attack of minus one, not fun. And this land, to be frank, combined is worth like, what? this less than this province so it's really not worth fighting a load of troops over and over again over there you can take ando potentially if you build up a huge navy that you go start and go into a debt for and then chuck them here so rather tricky and also if you leave it too long japan will start to unify and then they'll come and destroy you so no real good choices and that's why they're number 13 and it already gets harder from here okay number 12 is in a very different position uh, Navarra itself, seven development, it's not terrible. Your ideas uh, aren't all, are also quite okay. I mean, look at this 5% discipline. You also get um, some morale damage right off the uh, bat, as well as some uh, diplomatic reputation. It's not terrible. Uh, the Also, you do get a mission tree, which is rather nice over here. Uh, and it's not bad missions either. You get yourself over here some <laughs> some cores and some national manpower, some national sailors modifier, which again, isn't great. But over here, you get public clear on Iberia, and I think you can also secure yourself a, a personal union over the Arakanese. Obviously, the same game as the Ainu game, uh, so we do have an alliance with Navarra, with uh, Castile. Generally speaking, you've got three massive powers and no good way to expand. Your best bet, ally France. Ally France and uh, nip in against the English, but then those are also French courts, so they'll hate you. Uh, but usually, you can use them to fight the Aragonese. If the Aragonese don't, oh god, they didn't. I was about to say, if the Aragonese don't rival Castile, you've got to restart, because there's you need one of these to fight the other, generally Castile to fight Aragon. And then immediately after you take land, Castile's going to ban you. Everyone on the Iberian Peninsula is going to hate you. You're going to have no friends and generally be underpowered the entire time. But one good war against Castile sets you up. So they're not the hardest nation on this list by any stretch, even though they look sandwiched between these nations. Generally, these nations hate, hate each other. And so the ability to uh, counter England, Castile and Aragon with France or powerful France or powerful uh, Castile does make this a little bit easier. And again, national is way better than I knew. Um, but it is, I would say, still a little bit harder because if things don't line up, you have a lot less uh, room for error. One bad war, you're dead. With Ainu, you, de you declare an offensive war and you lose. It's, you know, it's not that big of a deal. No one really wants your stuff anyway, apart from the Japanese. Whereas Navara, everyone wants to take you out. Domineering, uh, protective only because uh, we've allied them and generally England will decide they want your stuff as well. Oh, and there's the fun part of if your 47-year-old guy dies. But there are scripted events here, to be fair. Unfortunately, there's nowhere to run. You only have this. Okay, number 11, the Isles. Speaking of nowhere to run, welcome to the Isles. You have two provinces, and you're a vassal of Scotland. The fun part is that you might think, okay, let's get England on side. They won't support your independence because they have a hostile attitude towards you. Now, this can be remedied. If you get them over 100 uh, relations with you, then they should get rid of the hostile aspect to them. Uh, but in the meantime, a lot of stuff can happen, like Scotland gets absolutely rinsed by England, which you don't want. Uh, also, in that war, uh, England is going to want stuff, but you could try and betray them. 
it's just not pleasant. There is a an achievement that I did in terms of Isles called Inner Turmoil. So by 1500, you have to own 20 provinces. Uh, none of them can be islands. Uh, and this counts. So yeah, heading out over here is a good idea. On the plus side, once you do win this war against uh, Scotland, uh, you do have access to Norway, which is generally quite easy to win, provided you have the navy for it. Uh, and then obviously the riches of Ireland. So a little bit harder than Navarra, I would say, because Navarra has access to a strong ally immediately, whereas uh, as the Isles, you just have England. And then once you take Scotland, England will abandon you. And generally, no one really wants to ally you, even France after that, because you've incurred aggressive expansion from taking land from Scotland. It's it's a similar... It's like Scotland Plus, right? It's like... <laughs> the Scottish, Scottish start is not... Um, it's a fun one. It's not an easy one. Uh, but then you're doing that, but a couple of years late, really, with no friends and no real base and uh, generally uh, a much worse mission tree because, you know, you don't have one. On the bright side, you can form Scotland, which will then give you access to this mission tree. Fortunately, Scotland for their mission tree will try and integrate you. So you need to be wary of that. In terms of ideas, you have chance of new air garrison size, which is just terrible. <laughs> Uh, some 15% morale of armies is very, very good, though. Siege ability also quite good. Generally, at this point, you'll have formed Scotland, but I would probably keep the shock damage plus 15% and also national manpower modifier. I I'd take that. It's that 50% morale initially that's going to be very useful, especially in that war against England. I'd like to take this moment to uh, to tell you that these these choices, these nature picks are purely subjective. So I find Navarra easier than the Isles. I find the Isles a lot trickier just because there's, again, less of a room to maneuver diplomatically. Navarra, you have the diplomatic reputation plus one and people willing to help you and attack your allies. Whereas over here, you have England and once that's gone, no one is coming to save you. Also, even if you did ally France, they're not landing on England. And getting a navy that beats the English, very tricky. So it's sort of like, I've won one war. I've taken most of Scotland. Fantastic. And you got to hope some shenanigans has gone on in Scandinavia to try and get you some uh, base stacks over there. Otherwise, in an OCB of East Frisia might be on the cards and <laughs> joining the empire. Which actually I, was a strategy I did before. It, it's quite effective. Okay, next up at number 10, we have Sukhothai. <laughs> you can't attack them whilst at war. Thing? What the hell is that? Okay, it's been a little while since I played that. I didn't know Sukhothai just just got Ayutthaya as a vassal. What the hell triggered that? Is it just a random event? So what's happened there is that Ayutthaya's... That's it, okay, right. Ayutthaya's got an event that basically means they... It's called the Ascension of Trelok. And if they, there's three options. If the uh, AI picks let us decide, then we get to pick to do that. And they haven't done that in this case. Yeah, okay, they've picked that and that's when we do it. Cool. I assume they'll always do that when there's a player. And if it happens to us, what we do is we just inherit them and we kill them. Well, I guess this no longer belongs on this list. <laughs> I didn't know obscure Sukkotaya law. I'm now washed. Okay, back to something I know is a terrible thing. Uh, this lot, the Siberian miners. This is horrible. You start out with three development and nowhere to go. Quite literally nowhere to go. With Kamstals, you can't move anywhere. As this lot, you can. You can head out and migrate, which is nice. But then where are you going to migrate to? <laughs> they still have the same migration mechanics as the old ones. I remember when um, Leviathan first came out and it removed the migration mechanics from these lots. They were just sort of stuck here. But even though they can migrate now, it's still a very hard campaign because the best you can do is migrate here and then attack from the north. And by that point, I mean, how often can we migrate? Yeah, once every uh, every five years. So, so you know, five, 10, 15, 20 years. So you'll, you'll have headed there for 20 years without feudalism, to be clear. Uh, and you're basically... The same position as I knew, but a lot worse because you have fewer provinces and have had to have just move to try and conquer someone. So definitely a very tricky start. Uh, the other part about this is this is one of the most least fun nations to play. Uh, I was considering making a video where I was like, oh, least fun nations to play in E4. But then like, uh, there's not much point in making that video because no one's going to click on it. Because why would you watch that video? Uh, it did include sort of most of the new world. Uh, also, in terms of hardest nations, uh, I, I've probably already pointed out in the intro, but I'm not doing... Uh, any of the New World stuff, because frankly, uh, a lot of that is tedium, not difficulty. This one is difficult because you're going to get, it's tedious to get here, it's difficult to conquer that. Whereas, um, yeah, this just tedious, and in often cases, not even that tricky. That's why you're not seeing the native tribes. As you can see, we discovered these lands as we, as we migrate there, but would you migrate this way? Like, if I do this, um... Migrating this way is just it's pointless. <laughs> the only hope you have is to migrate into these lands over here and then attack uh, the Georgian tribes. That's it. That's your only option. 
Uh, the, one of the reasons why I think this is harder than places like Navarra is Navarra you have uh, the ability to choose. Um, it's easy. It's, it's harder than Sukhothai because Sukhothai is apparently a really easy niche. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It, it's you have to do this one thing. And if the situation doesn't develop to your advantage over here, it's over for you. Uh, you don't really have too many other options. And by too many other options, I mean you have none. Speaking of other options, we have the Southeast Asian miners over here, the stateless societies. The reason I've lumped these guys together is because they are all in the same boat. There is very little difference between them. You start with a very unique uh, government type, which is stateless society, uh, which gives you morale uh, of armies plus 15% and fort defense. But unfortunately, you get governing capacity modifier minus 99%. In days past, what that would have done is you would have been able to overload the numbers, like it's like the whole integer overload thing, and get like huge bonuses. Uh, it's kind of ridiculous. But now you can't do that. And so if you expand even a little bit, you're starting to get horrifying effects. You'll be over your governing capacity immediately. Also, you start without feudalism. But let's say I've, I've taken these lands. Oh, cool. Built a force on it. Lovely. Embrace feudalism. That's great. And I'm already 41 out of 4, which is going to give me stability cost modifier plus a thousand percent, advisor cost modifier plus a thousand percent, aggressive exp expansion impact plus 446 percent, administrative efficiency minus 464 percent. Uh, so yeah, kind of miserable. Also, I wouldn't have been able to take all that land anyway, uh, given. I know about this. It's also worth mentioning that you can't switch off of stateless society until you reform. So you can either form an advanced tribe, which is stupid, or you form into a republic, and then suddenly the game freezes, it freaks out, this is very normal, and then suddenly you have uh, yourself a decent amount of governing capacity. But until that point, you're screwed. You can't do anything. <laughs> okay, so why is this nation not number one? If it's so horrible, if it's so terrible, why are these three not the hardest nations of the game? And that's because the threat of being conquered is not as prevalent, plus you can... Uh, do this. Uh, in fact, obviously this isn't going to work an infinite amount of times, but doing this and this really drops it down to zero again, uh, and you can make these guys loyal. So playing with vassals is the way to go. You centralize yourself as uh, an authority, and you do have routes of expansion in terms of the areas around you, and also Champa is quite easy to fight. An alliance with Ayutthaya means Khmer is similarly easy, and you just start feeding vassals. The reason it's not as hard as others is because you have the ability to get out of it. The threat to your independence is minimal. Generally speaking, Khmer won't just like attack you out of the blue, as might happen with some of the other nations on this list. I think you know who I'm talking about. Uh, it's not like as, as hard-coded uh, as that, so you have some freedom to move, uh, and also vassals are going to make your life easy. You can also take certain idea groups that will uh, get rid of some of the negative effects of the stateless society up until you get your reform progress. But essentially, it's a bit tedious, not difficult to sit around and then get your government reforms. So, yeah, you will you will survive, in my opinion, uh, which makes this not as difficult as some of the others on the list. Uh, and uh, if you have diplomatic or administrative ideas, you can start to build your own little vassal empire, keeping everyone nice and loyal uh, and friendly and getting them to fight your wars for you. Very different kind of gameplay. I kind of want to play this on the channel. Uh, kind of unique uh, way of playing, for sure. It's telling that I tagged over here to try and show you the next installment on this list, and they are already dead. Uh, ahead of Granada, um, ahead of a couple of the other people, but Mazab have perished. So we're going to have to uh, restart here. So yeah, Mazab. As you saw, Mazab at the start of the game uh, was disappeared. They were thrown out of North Africa by Tugurt. Another thing, if you look at the religious map mode, Mazab is Ibadi in a region where every single individual is Sunni. The closest Ibadi you've got is down here in Oman, and they're obviously not going to be uh, any help to you at all, which means you have no allies. Uh, maybe uh, once in a blue moon, Tlemcen will ally you, but generally not because you neighbor them and you're a heretic. Sometimes Morocco, but probably not. Basically, you have no friends. These guys will gang up. You can probably take out the Tunisian miners uh, in terms of like marking up and such, but you don't have that much of an economic base to recover. You have six development overall in your entire nation. These other places also are terrible. So you, I don't think there's a single one that has anything more than the the ba oh, there you go. Jarrett has five development in a province. But essentially, even if you conquer all of this lot, you aren't doing so hot. Plus, Fazan is guaranteed by Tunis. You're going to have to fight them. Tunis will crush you like a bug. And they have missions to do so and will do so. So everyone around you will attack you and kill you. That's why it's harder than the stateless societies, which will generally be left alone. Not for the entire game, but aren't under immediate threat of death. Uh, this lot are. Mazab are. Moreover, you have uh, Berber Traditions. Uh, which is nice, you know, that that's great, you've got some 10% morale of armies and such, uh, and you have uh, a feudal theocracy, but 
you don't have the ability to raid, <laughs> nor do you have a coastline to do so. Whereas a Barbary Iqtha allows you to raid coasts. The Zab doesn't have that luxury, they're a feudal theocracy. However, they can flip to Barbary Iqtha um, once you have 50 reform. But you need a coastline for that. <laughs> On the plus side, you can raid other Sunnis because you're a Badi. So generally, you can do that. As far as I'm aware, unless it's been changed, you can go and raid uh, Tunis and Mamluks and such and, and sort of get things going. But up until that point, you, you've got no one, you've got nothing, you've got no money, uh, no provinces, nothing. Your best hope is to launch a war against Tlemcen the second that Tunis does. And also, I mean, if I do this, let's see how lucky we get. To be clear, at this point, you would have already uh, hired some uh, Yeah, there you go. That's unfortunate. So this is very unlucky. Uh, you have Tlemcen allying to Ghurt and that's it. Your run is over. It's done. You can't do anything about that. You can't fight those two. In fact, Tlemcen has allied uh, Jared as well, so they really don't want me living. Yeah, that's not happening. Um, so this would be a complete restart. This is another reason why Mazab is hard. You need better RNG than most other places. I mean, <laughs> it's just stainless side. The RNG doesn't really matter. Mazab, you will die. People really sleep on how hard this nation is to play. You don't, you're you a couple of problems away from the infinite money you associate with North Africa, um, but you just it's just so rough. It's horrible. Like I said, my advice is restart until you can take out Tukhurt and Jared. You take those guys out, and then you turn on uh, Tlemcen. Hopefully, they've been weakened by Tunis. Desperately try and improve relations with Morocco and hope that they have rivaled Tunis such that you can be threatened by Tunis and then fight them. And in the meantime, I hope that Tunis doesn't attack you. Tunis in and of itself isn't that powerful, but usually they'll ally Morocco if they're not rivaled, which is why you need to restart until they're rivaled. Because uh, you're not fighting Morocco and Tunis. No way in hell. And no one's coming to help you. No one. It's... It's just such an isolating experience. <laughs> so I was debating where we take uh, the Maldives and put them. Uh, this is a nation um, in stark contrast to the previous one which didn't have a coastline. This is all coastline. Now, the Maldives, you're not in as much danger as the as Mazab, right? As the Mozabites. It's You should be okay. Uh, no one's coming for you immediately. Later on, they will. But for now, you are fine. So why are these guys harder? Well, it's because you just have this province and you have no way of getting more. All of these guys will have larger armies and navies than you. Uh, okay, you can get a foothold. But once you do get a foothold, Janica's going to take you out. It's horrible. Your only hope is to hoist the black flag and become a pirate and raid everyone. But then everyone hates you, so you're not getting any allies. Starting to see the issue now. Zab, once the early game is resolved and you've beaten Tunis once and you have a coastline, you're then pretty much set. Uh, like, that's that's fine. So you take out Fazan, you raid everyone, you take out Tunis, and then you've got money. Uh, and you're fine. And then you can start actually playing the game because you'll be large enough to... Uh, but the fact you're a baddie won't matter and you can even flip uh, fates if you want. Maldives, not so much. You, you, yeah, no. You're also Sunni, doesn't help when everyone down here is Hindu, like fully, fully Hindu. So no one's going to be allying you. In fact, everyone hates you and I believe wants your land. Yep, they desire the Maldives. So a strong navy is your only hope. If I just put my stability up to two, we have seven ships here. What we're going to need to do is privateer in Coromandel. And we need 10%. 10%. How big 10% is? Alright, we're going to play through this until I can hoist the black flag. And I'll show you why this is so hard. Because hoisting the black flag is your only hope. You're not going to be beating anyone until you hoist the black flag. Because it gives you good army and navy buffs. So you'll be able to actually challenge uh, for things. If you want to attack over here, there's no one you can attack. This lot are a vassal of Janagar. And then you have Kote, who have four provinces, uh, three provinces to your one. Uh, and this lot, again, are all going to get swallowed up by Janagar. So by the time you even raise the uh, hoist the black flag, I'm assuming most of these guys will be dead. There's our three merchants, but no ability to use them. Why do we have three merchants? Oh, Shafi. Okay, cool. Oh, good. Cavalry combat ability. <laughs> My favorite for a naval-based nation. By the way, this entire time, we're going to be making a loss. I can't even see how much pirates. You can also only build one ship at a time. So to recap, no ability to fight anyone against Mysore. So it begins. Because all these minor nations can single-handedly take you out. Plus, you have to land troops and then attack them. This isn't happening. Oh, there goes my sword. They're gone. Okay, we currently have 5%. We need to double our amount of ships. The other thing as well is that we can't have our guys out privateering in the meantime because we don't have any sailors and we need those to create more ships. Okay, it's been a long time. We're up to 7%, lads. 7. See, I was out here thinking that I'd done it, right? I need 10%. There's 11%. Turns out some of those guys are from Orissa. <laughs> okay, finally. We can uh, hoist the black flag, which is our only viable option, realistically. Uh, and as you can see, Janaga has conquered most of this land as I predicted, which leaves us with nowhere to go but taking colonial ideas and heading out elsewhere and making our profits um, a different way. Uh, on the bright side, thanks to our location, we can raid a lot of stuff. And that's what we're, exactly what we're going to do. You go in here and you just start raiding. That's how you do it. It's not fun and that's why it's harder than... Uh, 
Mazab, because the quicker you can do that, the better, but it takes so much time that uh, you can't really do too much else. And for those of you wondering, okay, Lath, why didn't you just take these territories first? Surely you could have uh, marked up. Yes and no. So firstly, it's very difficult logistically to move your troops over there given the small size of your navy. Combined uh, other minor states will have a larger navy than yours and will take you out. You start off with three cogs. It took me this long to build up 20 ships in total. Uh, that's been about 12 years of the game. Uh, because you have one province and that's the only province you can build off of. So if you're building ships, you can't build troops. If you're building troops, you can't build ships. So it's very, very tricky. Sure, maybe, let's say, you do some diplomatic wrangling and you're able to get some access and such. You attack into one of these nations, you hold it, then Vajanagal is going to come for you. Your only way, or only viable way, to consistently... So I, when I talk about these kinds of videos, I like to try and be consistent. I don't want to like be like, oh, hey, here's a... This is why um, guides, I think, I need to be more targeted because I don't like to be like, okay, here's a guide. And then someone just shows you their gameplay and it's, it like skews massively from the norm. A guide should be able to re be repeatable. This is something that is repeatable. You should be able to become a pirate and raid pretty much every time. And then you can do whatever you want. If you wanted to play a tool game of like a pirate republic on the island of the Maldives, that's kind of cool. Uh, and that'd be a lot of fun, but it's still very hard to move from here. It's a very difficult start. Speaking of very difficult starts, and they're gone. <laughs> okay, the Byzantines. Byzantium is, of course, one of the hardest starts in E4. It's meant to be that way, but I think it's received so much love from the devs that it's not as hard as it potentially should be. I think Byzantium should be a lot harder. You do start off with some heinous uh, things here, but it's, it's counterbalanced by the fact that um, I think that Paradox wants Byzantium to be very, very playable. So um, you might have Assault Fort ability, Morale of Armies and, and such, it might look terrible, but if you look at the countless Byzantine uh, guides out there, uh, there's, it, there's lots of easy ways to survive consistently. Um, I have, you might be wondering, Lath, this DLC updated Byzantium, why haven't you made a video? Uh, I have a plan that I want to, of a new style of video I want to make, um, and Byzantium is going to be the subject of that, so keep an eye out for that. So I'll be playing, I will be playing a Byzantium game. But it's going to be in a very, like the pr presentation of it is going to be in a very uh, different and hopefully much cooler and engaging uh, style than what I usually put out on the uh, on the channel. Because I want to I develop my skills a little bit. Anyway, enough about me. Uh, yeah, the thing is with Byzantium, why it's not number one on this list and why it's only number five and why other nations are harder than it is because once you do the start, you're pretty much home dry. Like you have a very powerful uh, mission tree. You have a very powerful uh, a set amount of cores that you could take in one warp. You're pretty set. You're basically the Ottomans. Just a little bit later on with uh, a couple of debuffs. Like, it's... it's The initial war is hard, for sure. And there's no room for mistakes, but that's why there are guides on it. But once that happens, you're safe. Whereas some of these other nations, you fight one war, you're not safe. You keep on... There's a lot of danger. Lots of danger. And so I don't want to talk about Byzantium too much because I think it's done to death. Fundamentally, look up a guide. It's a hard start. It'd be even... It should be even harder. Like, Byzantium should be, in my opinion, the number two hardest start in the game. But it's currently at number five. Because, again, you've got a lot of options for it. And that's that's fine. I don't I don't hate that. The AI can't pull it off, but I think it's too easy for the player to. I don't want to talk. Like I said, I'll, I'll move on quite quickly. Um, let me know if you disagree with any of the decisions I've made, by the way, uh, throughout this. If you're like, actually, I knew it was the hardest nation. I don't know why I've just put that voice on you. Um, but, yeah, I think this is, this is harder than Maldives because you are going to die. But easier than Mazab. Um, sorry, it's, it's harder than Mazab because you're more guaranteed to die. Um, but... I was debating mixing up Byzantium and Mazab because Mazab, I think, is, is you don't have you don't have as much purchase. Byzantium, you're more likely to die in the first war, but then once you get a foothold, you're fine. Whereas Mazab, you are have a constant threat of death. So what do you think? What's harder, Mazab or Byzantium? I think Byzantium. That's why I put it in this list. Onto a very similar game, but a little bit harder. You have Albania, ruled by the illustrious, wonderful Skanderbeg that has a phenomenal army. The reason I think this is harder than Byzantium is you face the similar challenge of the Ottomans are the big bad, the big scary, uh, but without any of the advantages that you have. You do have a mission tree very slightly, but it doesn't really help you at all. Um, you have to win against Venice and also the Ottomans to even get there. And realistically, if the Ottomans attack you, you're done. You have to be proactive in this. And that's what makes it harder. Uh, it's harder than Byzantium. I, well, I need to drill this into you. Albania is harder than Byzantium. I don't know who on their right mind would disagree with this. Um, also... In terms of your oh, your neighbors, everyone is stronger than you. A general by a, a general Albania start, in my opinion, you go somewhere like this. You get yourself some mercenaries and you start immediately getting claims. 
Once you're here, you can grab yourself a claim on Kosovo and you'll have to fight Bosnia and Serbia at the same time. Generally, you'll be able to do this. You are going to be massively outnumbered. If you catch them early, like here, uh, also these debuffs mean nothing because you have, yeah, like five and three on them. So you can fight in the mountains all you like. Defending the mountains is obviously better, uh, but we're going to fight two battles in mountains back to back and you'll see we'll win them both. Bosnia doesn't have any forts, so you can march in and stack wipe everyone, for the most part at least. Uh, and that's Bosnia done. Then you peace out Bosnia, uh, or at least you full occupy Bosnia, and then you full occupy um, Serbia. These areas will hold out. I mean, in fact, I'll just show it. I don't like people when they, when they, I don't like when people don't show off what they're talking about, so I will. If he attacks you, you can take him out really easily. Skanderbeg is a godsend. His only issue is that he has a one in siege. As you can see here, I messed up. I, <laughs> I left the game running, uh, and I'll lose. That's why it's one of the hardest starts. Anyway, generally speaking, you can, um, with a little bit of care, I'm playing on speed 5 and under 18, so it doesn't really matter. A little bit of care, what you do, take out most of these lands. Um, you can take out most of uh, this area. You'll get a small cottage, but that's fine. Uh, as in, if you take a bunch of Bosnia, it's humanly possible. But that should give you enough of a base to then fight the Turk. You wait until they're in the east, and you just attack with Skanderbeg. If you don't move fast enough, Skanderbeg is not a young man. He will die immediately. <laughs> If Skanderbeg dies, you have to restart. But generally speaking, that's the way you do things. Uh, but Albania, very, very tricky start because even once you've taken out Bosnia and Serbia, you've cleaned up the Balkans a little bit here, um, Venice can declare war at any time. The Ottomans can declare war at any time. If either one of those do with allies, you die. But what you can do is ally uh, Hungary and Austria and then use them against the Ottomans. It's, it's slightly harder than Byzantium because um, you have less of a platform under you later on but easier than byzantium because you have don't have to do the initial war right away you can choose when you do it Whereas byzantium you have to do it pretty much byzantium's being meta <laughs> nice but over here we have someone who i think is harder than byzantium and also harder than uh, albania uh, and that is hissing cave both karakinyunlu and akinyunlu bit were given an update you are surrounded by both generally speaking the ottomans don't want to ally you uh, but do you know who they do ally usually akinyunlu this is a very lucky game which they haven't if this was my game i would be very happy uh, but you have to fight akinyunlu who are stronger than you who have a much better general if i tag in fact i'll show you don't know where he is interesting did he die early i think he died anyway akinyunlu has an incredible general uh, that is used to take out karakinyunlu and so you can't fight them unless you have overwhelming force plus the ottomans usually attack akinyunlu so your only hope as this in kefa uh, is to ally the mamluks and hope that they help you out if they don't if you're too slow you're killed by either karakinyunlu or the or akinyunlu uh, akinyunlu uh, if they're allied to the ottomans you've got no hope and if the mamluks don't ally you you also have no hope so generally lack of hope uh, and again the reason i think it's harder than these two is albania has a phenomenal um, starting king which puts you ahead on all techs um, as well as uh, means you, you win pretty much every single war um, almost guaranteed initially uh, and byzantium has the aforementioned platform uh, they are more likely to they're a, a more similar nation to mazab but they're more likely to die than mazab because mazab has several easy targets around it whereas akil and karakil are not easy targets especially given the recent update they will both just dumpster you you got yeah very little hope and also most of the time the mammoths don't even ally you has in cave has a very lucky game here in fact let me show you yeah over here a little bit trickier to ally the mamluks and sod's law means that i think see there you go right there akil allied the ottomans the last time was an incredibly lucky game for <laughs> facing in cave but it means that you can't attack this lot without getting destroyed because the Ottomans will kill you. But you can't attack Karakinu either because they're even stronger. They have 30k together. Your only hope, try and ally someone like Ajam. Hope they take the hits, murk up and launch in. But most, that's like a 50% chance of success right there. Uh, you also start um, with, where are your ideas? Over here. Yeah, not really anything to your name. You get another 10% morale armies, I suppose. But other than that, yeah, there's nothing for you. The weird thing about his and Kaper is that you can form them Eagles, which I'm not sure why, because these guys are the Ubids. They were very much in this region. This is like, this is Saladin's dynasty, um, in case you're wondering. So they had like Syria and, and Egypt. I don't know why they could form the Eagles. Al Saleh Salahuddin uh, has begun to lay the foundation of his new empire. Although inferior numbers, his well disciplined troops have managed to achieve several decisive victories against the Sultans of India. Of India. The Battle of Hissin Cape became the first great victory in a series of territorial expansions. I really hope there's no Battle of Hissin Cape against the Indians, because otherwise we've done something wrong over here. Because <laughs> we'd have to steam. Anyway, that, that we're getting distracted. We also form Persia. Uh, sure. I feel like forming Arabia is more the speed. Anyway, it's a very, very, very tricky nation uh, and one that doesn't ever get easier because you always have, for example, if the Timurids are strong, the Ottomans are strong, the Mamluks are strong, you never really have any, I mean, if you're unlucky, muscular come along, any clear routes of expansion, it's just more opportunism over and over again versus, again, Albania and Byzantium, which can have themselves a little platform. Being not having any platform, welcome to Naxos, one of the hardest nations in the game. This is number two. 
in my opinion, this is the second hardest nation in the entire game. Start as a vassal. The Ottomans might support you. Generally, maybe will. But the second you win that war, they're coming for you. And you don't have any way to expand. The Venetian navy is better than the Ottoman one, especially at the start. You, you're going to have to expand into Byzantium. Which, again, is going to annoy the big bad Ottomans, who will attack and kill you. Okay, well, maybe you go after the knights. Oh, sorry, you mean the, the fortress that is the knights. Uh, who, yeah, uh, you're not landing on there unless you've developed a lot a larger navy. And we're running the same issues with the Maldives. If you've realized now, one of the reasons I really like Naxos at the number one position is it encapsulates all of the problems that we've had with other nations on this list. It is the same as the Maldives in terms of the fact that it is an island, only has one province, and it can only build in one province at a time. It is the same as Sukhothai, uh, before I realized it was very easy, that it's a vassal of, uh, of Venice, a uh, vassal of a much stronger nation. It's the same as Mazab insofar as even if you get independence, everyone around you is trying to kill you, and the same as Sisin Kafer because you same face the same threats as the Ottomans. It is a nasty, miserable time. <laughs> On top of that, you have, I mean, look, Ptolemy's heretics for whatever. Cool. That, I mean, there are, there's only orthodox heretics right now, but sure. Cost fabric claims is terrible as a, uh, um, as an idea. Galley combat ability, actually really useful over here, but you don't even have the strongest in the region. Tunis has you on lock with 20%. They've got double and they start with it. So you're not fighting uh, anyone uh, of significance at that point. I mean, privateer efficiency, bug efficiency, sure, that's nice. Army tradition, it's okay. National arrest minus one's basically useless. Technology cost minus 5% and core creation cost minus 10% with finally a diplomatic, a diplomatic annexation cost minus 15%. Terrible ideas. Really terrible. And a horrible position to boot. I mean, let's just do this. Let's see what we can do here. The only saving grace is that um, Venice does have the Papal State, Hungary, and the Ottomans. Uh, are the ones we're, we're going to try and get. You might look at that and think, damn, what an easy start. You can get Hungary on board, and the Papal State, and the Ottomans. This is going to be easy. We'll see about that. Players Naxos was one of my favorite playthroughs that I did um, for the channel, to be clear. So I do enjoy it. Like, a nation being one of the hardest is not necessarily a bad thing. The number one pick, which is my favorite nation. Uh, one of my favorite nations to play. Right, I'm going to see if I can bait it here, because what happens if you stagger these, and you get too many support independents, and the AI feels threatened, is they will abandon you. Uh, which is not all we want, because we need all these. Okay, full disclosure, I am going to yes man this uh, for the sake of time. But generally speaking, it's like 50-50 um, whether you can or not get this. But this is the tricky uh, part which I want to show you, which is the fact that you have to wait three years because um, of a truce with Venice. Oh, thanks everyone. Yeah, it's yes, man. So let's just do this. Advance the date a little bit. And we go to support independence. So really easy war, this one. You just sit there and they'll win for you. The issue is you need to make sure you actually go and occupy these provinces because otherwise this will happen. And it's just because I'm not paying that much attention. Bang. The Ottomans want this land. Uh, so they'll have, every, like, if you want to take... Crete. If you want to take Negroponte, you have to land on it. Uh, welcome to one of the harder areas of the, of the game. Uh, also, this will happen. If you try and land, a navy will come and destroy you. So you have all of these provinces. No one, like, everyone wants a piece of Venice, so no one's going to give it to you. And now's our chance to land on Crete. Well, look, Rhodes, for example, that's now that's now Turkish. The most I can get out of this war right now, and presumably forever, is Crete. <laughs> and that means that everyone that you've allied is going to hate you. I mean, like, you can give away land, right? Like, let's say I was going to go buddy-buddy with the Ottomans, and I was like, okay, cool, have land. Like, sure, I've got the Ottomans as my uh, ally, but then what? <laughs> I've got nothing else. So I've just integrated Athens and Byzantium, right? Simulating that, that we've uh, conquered those territories. The Ottomans then break their alliance with you. It means you're bordering them and they want to kill you. So you are basically Byzantium, but without any of the bonuses that you could have achieved. So trying to keep them as an ally is not viable. Uh, and so, like I said, so now it's just Byzantium, but harder, pretty much. Like, yeah, you've got a couple more provinces and you don't have as many debuffs. But the point is that Byzantium is set up to defeat the Ottomans. Naxos is not. Naxos does not have nearly the same advantages that uh, Byzantium does in terms of fighting the Ottomans. Naxos is a lot harder to fight the Ottomans with than the Byzantines. Ergo, they are a harder nation. Still fun, but very, very difficult. Uh, what you can do, though, is go down this and, and start going down the uh, the Jerusalem thing um, and start forming Jerusalem because you're technically a crusader state. So that's kind of cool. So it's still a fun campaign. It's just very, very tricky. And at this point against the Ottomans, you're going to need to try and ally someone like Hungary. You're like, oh, wait, I've, I betrayed Hungary. They kept their eyes with me. Oh, that's nice. Oh, wait. Yes, man. I was about to say, great. <laughs> They'll do it. No, they won't. They really, really won't. Um, so very, very tricky. Uh, I think I've said all I can say really on Naxos. Um, try it for yourself. But we do come to our number one. That's right, Granada. Granada is the hardest in EU4. Steel. <laughs> this is a timer to your death. Uh, 1448, uh, pretty reliably within like a year, 
um, of that uh, ending. Castile will attack you and they'll usually attack you with the help of Portugal. In terms of allies, you can get, generally speaking, if they're not rivaled, Tunis and Morocco. Fortunately for me, in this case, they are rivaled, which means they won't ally both ally you so you have to restart there's a couple of schools of thought in terms of granada my favorite is you attack you use uh, morocco you stand over here and you attack slemson and use that as like a tax base to increase uh long size and that sort of thing to then turn up and fight um castile your saving grace is that enrique is a zero one and they have a two over here and well yours is terrible but you have a uh where are you a pretender situation that turns up and replaces your ruler with a better one. One of my proudest achievements was I managed to play as Granada and I did it at speed five without pausing. This is like, I, 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 uh, this is something that I will say when people say that I'm not good at E4. I'm not claiming to be the best at E4, but back in the day, I did Byzantium and Granada, speed five, no pausing. That is so hard. I need you to try that. I just, you have to try it. It's the most miserable experience you can have because you need to, you need to like, really focus every atom of your being has to be doing that i've got a decent pc so it went really fast well it was a laptop back in the day um but still granada is is, is ridiculously difficult because even after you win the Clemson war even after you beat castile for the first time you're gonna have to deal with aragon castile and portugal again and it's that second war that decides it they can still beat you they are still stronger than you in that second war to uh destroy you uh, and it especially sucks if alliances mean that these three are united Plus, you then have to deal with the coalition in terms of this lot and also France uh, that will sometimes get involved. France then sometimes pounces on weakness and launches an attack into northern Iberia, leaving you uh, floundering. So it's just it's not fun, man, <laughs> On that, if that happens. Uh, don't get me wrong, this challenge is a ridiculously fun campaign. And then you can form Andalusia, which is a really, really cool uh, nation. But Granada itself kind of rough also to be clear on the speed five no pausing thing i didn't win <laughs> i survived these things are very different the byzantine one i ended up winning that was that was quite cool anyway uh we've gone very off topic which means for me it's time to end the video that is my list of the hardest nations uh in eu4 that you can play if you agree with me this is incredibly subjective maybe you think the maldives is the best one ever maybe you think granada pff, you do it in your sleep maybe you think sukatai despite that um event they get are still ridiculously difficult even though it's rather embarrassing but i keep eating the video to show that i'm human and i make mistakes either way chaps uh please let me know in the comments down below and i will see you all next time make sure to like and subscribe please thank you very much goodbye huge shout out to my patrons most importantly redguard76 lewis wright ryan b atreides blenderman krilly ghost wolf jade owl 52 xiaomi luke matthew McHugh, mike473 mikey lewis original shadow singer and tom your support means a lot guys also here why not watch another video I mean, it's it's right there. Just just click on.